Then in my words, you are my true disciples. If we remain in the word of God, we are continuing with the subject that uh, God has been uh, ministering to us, building with God, building with one another. Now we are looking at building with the word of God, having faith and trust in the word of God. And Jesus tells those that we are following him, he turns round and speaks to them. He turns round and speaks to Paul. He turns round and they speak to Richard. He turns around and speaks to Emias. He turns around and speaks to Shekinah. All of us, he speaks to Jene. He speaks to Pastor Ancone. What is Jesus saying in John 8, 32? He says, you shall know the word of God, which is the truth. And this truth will do what? who set you free and we all of us need freedom we all need deliverance we all need salvation we all need help so what is uh, Jesus telling the disciples he says there is one way that will help you to be set at liberty there is one thing that can deliver you and that is the word the word of God. Now, if the word of God sets us free, if the word of God is that powerful to help us, to deliver us, to change us, then we must find out what is so special about the word of God. Why should I build my life using the word of God? Why should I use the word of God to depend on it in everything that I do? Let's go to the book of Psalms, and I uh, will be asking uh, uh, people to, uh, to read. Uh, please get your Bibles, and she can actually get the microphone, and we'll be passing it on. Psalms 138. Psalms 138. We are going to the Word of God. Why should I build my life on the Word of God? Why should I depend on the Word of God? Why should I share the Word of God with other people? Why should we as a family always go back to the Word of God? If you get your Bibles, let's go on to Psalms 138 and we'll read verse 1 and 2. Shekinah, if you read verse 1. Shinei, if you read verse number 2 of Psalms 138. We are dealing with the Word of God. Why should we uh, put our lives to the word of God why should we connect to the word of God and for those in Zoom, Kathy will be able to type in the scriptures so all of us, we can get the scriptures Psalms 132 verse 1 and 2 Shekana, if you read 1 and uh, Jene, you read verse 2 I give you thanks O Lord with my whole heart I give you thanks with all my heart before the gods I sing them And before you and with all my heart I give it all unto the Lord. Verse 2. What is verse 2 saying? Psalm 138 verse 2 says, I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. Amen. Let's read that again. Verse 2, the last part of verse 2, that's the one. Uh, verse uh, 2, that's the one I want us to all understand. What is the writer saying? He says, I thank you, my Lord. I give you all the praise. I bow before you. I adore you. But there is one thing that he wants us to get. Yes, Sijine, read it slowly, especially the last part of uh, verse 2 Psalms 138 verse 2 why is he giving thanks to God why is he thanking the name of the Lord why is he appreciating the loving kindness of God read it again I bow down towards your holy temple I bow down towards your holy temple in Jerusalem and give thanks to your name I always give thanks to your name and your faithfulness. And your faithfulness or your loving kindness. 
For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. You have exalted above everything. What have you? What has God done? He has lifted His word above everything. In other words, God appreciates His word, and He has kept it where He has kept His word above His name. What does that mean? In other words, if you say. Uh, uh, for example, the nurses that work in the hospitals. When people go to work, it is not their names that is to be known or to be expressed that everybody on the world should know your name. Yes, it's important to know your name. But above all, what you are delivering, the policies that governs your work. So God is saying, my way, my name, is not the only thing that you should be concerned about. You must pay attention to my words. When we are hearing to say the Prime Minister said, we may not even pronounce his name correctly, but if you can pay attention to what he said, then you have obeyed that person. If you are driving on the road, and then you are seeing those billboards and you want to know where you are going. It's not the color of the billboard that you are attracted to. It is the writing on the billboard that you want to pay attention to. Because the words are taking you to the destination where you want to go. So what God is saying, of all the things my name, my place, and my authority, I have put them under, uh, under what? Under the word, the word is on top of concerning of all the other things you can know about God. If you want to appreciate what God does and who he is, come to Psalms 138 and see what the writer says. If I go through it, Oh, he says from verse 1, I give thanks with all my heart before the mighty ones. I sing praises to you, O God. I bow myself towards Jerusalem. I give thanks to your holy name for your loving commitment for your truth. That is what he says in the Hebrew. He says, I give thanks to your name. Why? For your loving commitment, for your truth, your word, for you have made great word above your name. Your name is, uh, is below your word. Your word is important. Mm -hmm. Even people, have you noticed that uh, when people do things and then they say, so and so said these words. Now people are trying to compare the name of a person and the words that they said so that they can put together and say yes, that man is a man or a woman of his words. So what is God teaching us? He's teaching us to say his word is important. And if God has exalted his word above everything, what about you and me? We must respect the word of God. We must act on the word of God. John told us in John 8, 32, and it says, you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know is the truth that sets you free. Do you know if you go to the doctors and you explain to them how you are feeling, and the doctor will examine you, and because you didn't know what was wrong with your body, and then the doctor finds, uh, finds exactly what is wrong with you. And because now you know the truth that the doctor has told you to say, the problem is A, B, C, D. How do we deal with this problem? You go and get this medication in order to sort out this. The doctor is trying to establish the truth, the facts about your condition. And once the condition has been diagnosed and you know what the problem is, then they'll give you medication to sort out your problem. So what God is saying, my word 
is above everything. My word is able to set you free. My word is able to deliver you. My word is able to help you live a good life. That is what God is saying. So he has exalted his word above his name. So you and me, what we need is to follow what God is doing and what he has said. Is God respect for his word. God wants the word to be above anything that you can think of. Let's go to 1 John. Chapter number 1, the first letter of John in the New Testament towards the book of Revelation, towards the end of the Bible. John was uh, a disciple of Jesus Christ and he wrote the gospel and he wrote some letters, 1 John, 2 John. And now I want us to look at uh, 1 John. He wrote three short letters, 1 John, 2 John, 3rd, the episodes, the letters, apart from the gospel, as you go towards the end of the Bible. And I want us, Jay, to help us read uh, uh, this uh, 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 1 John, chapter number 1, uh, with your lovely wife, Musama from verse 1 to 9. So each one of you can read four and five, five verses. So 1 John. 1 John, chapter number 1, microphone. I want us to hear these words. We are talking about the word of God. If we are going to succeed as believers, what 1 John, chapter number 1, verse 1 to 9, is for describing the word of God and the importance and what is in the word. So, Jay, you can read from verse 1 to 5, and um, Sama can read from verse 6 to Nine. Let's all go there. If you've got Bibles, open your Bibles. Uh, there are some more Bibles there. And let's all go to the Word, uh, the Word of God. Yes, please. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God. And the Word... I think that's John and the Gospel. We'll come back to that. But I want us to go to the first book, uh, 1 John 1, towards the end of the Bible. And then we'll come back to John uh, chapter number one. It's like you are reading my mind. And uh, we want to go first. Uh, let's go first to the letter. 1 John chapter number one, verse one to nine. So this is what uh, the writer of John is trying to, uh, to explain to us the importance of the word of God. 1 John chapter number one, verse one. To nine. I want each one of us to pay attention uh, to these uh, words. 1 John chapter number 1 and we'll read from verse 1 to 9. Why is it important to believe this word? Are there people that can testify of this word? Yes, sir, Jen. We write to you about the word of life. We write to you about what? The, the word, word of life. Take note of those words. We are writing to you about this word of life. Which has existed from the very beginning. Which has existed from the very beginning. We have heard it. We have heard it. And we have seen it with our eyes. We have seen it. Can you see the paradox? We have heard the word and we have even seen the word. Yes, we have seen it. And yes, we have seen it. And our hands have touched it. And our hands have touched it. When was the last time, Jine, you, you touched the word? Shekinah. When was the last time you see it? You touch it? Amen. Yes, please. When his life became visible. When this life manifested or became visible that you could see it. We saw it. We saw this word. So we speak of it 
And we are speaking because we have seen it, we have heard it, we have touched it. And tell you about the eternal life which was with the Father. Which was with the Father. So this word as a Father. And was made known to us. And it was made known to us. Or in other words, it was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard. What we have seen, we have heard. We announce to you also. And we want to pass it on to you. So that you will join with us. So you can be part of this world. In the fellowship that we have with the Father and with the Son. Jesus and into Christ. the fellowship. So this world is taking you and joining hands with others so you can have a fellowship. We write this in order that our joy may be complete. We are writing these things so that joy, so joy is connected to that word. Now the message that we have heard from his son and announced is this. Now this message, this word we have heard from his son and we want to announce it to you. God is light and there is no darkness at all in him. God is what? Light and there is no darkness in him. If then we say that we have fellowship with him, yet at the same time we live in darkness. So he's saying because God's word, there is light. If you are still walking in darkness, then you don't have the word. Because light and darkness cannot be together. You need to operate in one. We, we are lying both, both in our words and in our actions. Mm. But if we live in the light, just as he is in the light, if we live in the light, just as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. Mm. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from every sin. Hallelujah. If we, if yeah. we, if we say that we have no sin, we, have, we deceive ourselves and there is no truth in us. Hmm. But if we confess our sins to God, He will keep His promise and do what He what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. If we say that we have not sinned, we have we make God out to be a liar, and His word is not in us. Wow, wow, wow! Amen. May God bless the reading of His word. So here we find uh, this passage in the first letter to John and he's trying to tell us some of the importance or aspects or components of the word of God and he is bringing out things that when you read it's like you are thinking wow first John chapter number one verse one that which is from the beginning which we have heard. How old is the word? Emias. How old is the word? The, from beginning. The word is from where? Is it from now or from beginning? From beginning and with Nana. Amen. So the word has lived longer than Nana. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are preaching together. I want all of us to follow this. The word of God that we talk about is not something that has just begun now. The word of God that we talk about is not just something that somebody came up with. According to John, who was a disciple of Jesus Christ, in 1 John chapter number 1, is bringing this truth. So let not the world delude us. Let not the world say, oh, we don't need this old book. We don't want this word, the word of God. We don't need the word of God. We can live by ourselves. Here John tells us what was from beginning, what we have heard. So the word of God has existed from beginning. Before you were born, before I was born, before the theologians, before the historians, and before everybody, the word of God has always done what? Existed. So it is a word from beginning. 
Now let's look at this paradox. Let's look at this equation. What we have heard about this world. What we have seen with our eyes. So this world, you can hear it. You can see it. And it says that which we have looked upon. And our hands have touched and handled concerning the word of life. What type of word is the word of God? What type of the word is the word of God? Give us this, uh, one second. 1 John chapter number 1 and verse 1. We have handled, we have seen it, and this we are saying concerning the word of life. What type of word is God's word? Come. From that scripture, the last part, what is it saying? It's a word of what? Life. Word of life. So in the word of God, there is life. And who doesn't want life? All of us, we want life. Everybody wants life. Those that work in the hospitals can tell you how precious life is. People can tell you how much they can spend just to have their lives helped. People pay billions and millions of dollars just to keep part of life, just to prolong life. But the Bible is telling us that real life is where? In the Word. The Word of God. Because this Word of God is the Word of life. Do you want to get more life in you? Go to the Word. The Word of God. Live according to the Word of God. Read the Word of God. In other words, when you are listening to the Word like this, what are you doing? You are listening to life. And this Word has existed from the beginning. That which we have heard, that which we have seen with our own eyes, that which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled this word. I don't know how I can explain this. This word is big. You can see it, you can hear it, you can touch it. That is the word of God. It is a living word. It is a word of life. And verse 2, what is verse 2 saying? And the life was manifested. Remember where we are coming from. He says it is the word of God which is the word of life. When did this life begin? When did this word begin? And the life was manifested. The word of God came and what happened? We saw it. It was revealed. It manifested. It came out. And we have seen it. And we bear witness. And the same word we announce to you. That everlasting life which was with the Father has now manifested to us. What a mighty God we say. So the word lived with God. Then the word came to live with us. And we will get to the scripture that uh, Jay read uh, in the Gospel of John, written by the same man. So this disciple walked with Jesus. He lived with Jesus. And he saw the word in manifestation. The word is so powerful. There is life. That's why when you pray for somebody who is sick, they get healed. Why? Because there is life in the word. When you pray for things and the situation changes, there is power in the word of God. That's why we need the word of God. All of us, we must depend on the word of God. And here what the Bible says in verse 3. 1 John chapter 1 Verse 3, why do we need to build on the word of God? Why do I need the word of God? He says in 1 John 3, chapter number 1, verse 3, we announce to you what we have seen and what we have heard 
so that you too might have fellowship with God. Mm. Can you see the connection? You cannot have fellowship with God without the word of God. You cannot have a good relationship with God without the word of God. We can uh, take this at a very uh, uh, normal uh, life. If you say this is my friend, how do you have fellowship? By talking to them. How do you talk? Using words. How do the government communicate what they are doing? They send words. They come on TV and tell us, this is what we are going to do for you. This is what we are doing. They send words. They speak words. So the Bible is telling us real fellowship between a Christian and the Christ he believes in or between a human being and God. The real fellowship of friendship comes alive using the word, the word of life. The word of God. There is no fellowship with God without the word of God. So we need the word of God. There are people who say, no, I can't read. You can listen to the word. John is even saying, this word of God, you can access it in various words. We have seen it. We have heard it. We have touched it. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's mouth faceted uh, word. You can see it. You can touch it. So the way of Christianity or being a Christian is not just what we say. The word of God is what we experience. Mm. The word of God is who we are. The word of God is a lifestyle. You don't just say things. You live according to that word. That's why we find uh, in nations People are saying we are taking this government out of power. Why? Because what they say and what they do are totally different. What they promised us during campaign and what they are doing is different. So people are trying to marry the words and the action. What they promise and what they are doing. So he says, we announce to you what we have seen what we have heard so that you may have fellowship with God. I don't know how many times John repeats the word we have seen, we have heard, we have touched. Why that emphasis? You can touch the word of God. Amen. Who is the word of God? Jesus Christ is the word of God. Mm -hmm. To confirm this, uh, Jay, can you read the scripture you read now in the gospel of John? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the gospels. This is the same guy, John, who wrote these words. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ. He walked with Jesus. He lived with Jesus. At the same time, he was the one who was a disciple of John the Baptist. And then when he heard John the Baptist talk well about Jesus, he left John the Baptist and followed Jesus, and he became the disciple of Jesus. This is the disciple whom Jesus says, the disciple whom he loved, and in the seating arrangement in the Hebrew times, uh, olden days, when you are sitting for fellowship or to have food, you sit and lean your head on the next person. You are lying on their uh, laps. You put your head on, the, on them. That's how they could make a circle around and then you are having fellowship, you are talking. The one who was sitting when Jesus lived and had 12 disciples, the one who was leaning his head on Jesus' laps is John the disciple, the writer of this book. So he knows what he's talking about. He saw him. He touched him. He heard him speak. And if you go to John chapter number 1, let's hear what the Bible says. Yes, Jay. Just verse 1 up to 3 maybe. We want to connect the word which is life. Who is this word? Why is the word so important? In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. From the very beginning, the word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. Wow! Did you hear that? In the beginning was the word. Children, let not anybody cheat you. 
Oh no, the word of God is old-fashioned. This word has been in a 